I'm gonna shrip the whole thing. Part three of the set five case opening. This is it. Last four boxes of set five for a while until it comes out in English. Cause set four is coming out real soon. And I'm gonna shrip the whole thing. All right. So I was just, I, I haven't pulled a Mongo rare from this set yet. And I've opened, I think this will be my fourth case. I'm opening a fifth case with a friend, but it's purely for fun. Sometimes you gotta strip them off camera to make sure that you're not forgetting the feeling of stripping, you know? But I feel like there's gotta be a trick to summoning a manga rare. Like there's gotta be something there, right? Some technique that I'm just missing out on and I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe if I think about the manga and talk about the manga, that could be cool. But actually, I think I should talk about the live action because the live action was sweet. I don't know if y'all saw the live action, but my feelings about it are that it was good. Oh, I gotta bless him. Whoops, bless him. Um, and, and this is why. Yeah, you know, I, I'm a Marvel fan. I was a Marvel fan as a child. I enjoyed reading comic books. I like fantastic stories about totally unreal things that have some relation to like everyday life. But Marvel movies started coming out, like comic book movies in general started coming out when I was a kid. And I read comics before the movies came out. And I always kind of liked the movies just because it was like exciting to see that there were movies. But comic book movies like weren't that great originally. They're actually like pretty bad. And uh, what happened over time, I think, is that Marvel kind of accepted that movies and comics were different forms of media, right? You can't make a comic book into a movie. It's just, they're not the same thing, right? They got really close with like Watchmen and there were a couple other ones back then that I think were close, but they're different things. So once I think you accept that, you can move in a direction. Oh, also I haven't pulled a Law Alt Art. Law Alt Art would be cool, but Law Manga Art would be sick, but Luffy Manga Art best. Um, they're different mediums, right? And once you accept that, kid, I think I, I think that's, I think I've pulled a couple kids now, two, three, maybe three. Well, I'm still gonna keep stripping these because there could be that SP, and I realized SP could be in one of those other packs that I just put off to the side, so we might end up stripping more than three boxes, which is fine because there's a lot to talk about with the live action. But I think once Marvel kind of accepted that, right? These are different forms of media. Like a movie is not a comic book comic book is not a movie and I think what that means for the story is that it has to become its own story right it's not gonna be the story that you read it's got to be its own thing and the thing that was cool about the live action is how heavily Oda was involved with it right that man like does not let anything leave his sight without his seal of approval on it and I think that's really great for having control over the story and what happens to it but the breaks were put on the live action multiple times. As a fan that was paying attention to what was going down, I know that there were a lot of delays. It got held up numerous times. But the way it came out, like, I mean, the writing's on the wall, yo. Best Netflix show in the history of Netflix shows, right? It's the most popular show in 84 different countries. Did better than, bless them, Stranger, Adam, or Stranger Things and Wednesday Adams, right? So. That's like, it's the best show. And, and it makes sense because it's the best story. So why wouldn't it be the best show? But it's hard to turn an anime into a movie. It's a very difficult thing to do. Like I said, they're different forms of media. Oh, I didn't know, did I not even bless him? Bless him. Or did I just bless him this one and forget? I guess we're gonna double bless him this box. Double bless him, here's a bless him. Bless him, bless him, the pack. Right, different things. So the story has to change a little bit. And the other thing also is that it's in English. Right? So when you go from Japanese to English, that inherently changes the story because the language is different. The way the story is told is different. But the thing that's so important about One Piece are like the lessons, the emotional value of things, the, um, you know, the, 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 the pieces of the story that come together that make you feel the feels. Oh no, I dropped the pack. Shimata. There it is. Is this the manga rare? Did I drop the manga rare? Just like that? Just like that? 200 friends nope um and yeah and i think that's what it did the story is slightly different like there's different pieces right we meet nami at a different time and zoro doesn't really laugh very much in the i guess he laughs like once kaido doshtai um but we see a different story we see it being told differently and i think the thing for me like when i was thinking of it before obviously you, you, you know you only get so much from the commercials and stuff but the thing is 
like there's one thing about one piece that i think makes it really really great consistently throughout the entire story is that luffy 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 lucy luffy is super super likable he's a really likable character and he's fun to watch and that's what Inaki does. And it's kind of cool that Inaki has like Mika in his name, sort of. And Godoy is like good boy or god boy or whatever. Like, he was cast perfectly. Inaki is the, Inaki is the Luffy on Earth. I mean, I, I do heavily associate with the Joy Boy, but maybe I'm from a different time. Inaki is totally Luffy vibes. And I think he does such a good job. And the character I was actually worried most about was Sanji. And I think uh, I think there are people that did share that fear because in all the interviews and stuff with Sanji, it seemed like he didn't quite know the story as well as the rest of the cast, which, you know, as fans, obviously, if somebody is playing the role, like you really want them to know that character really well so they can bring that character to life. And I think Sanji smashed it. I think he was awesome. He really, like, each character is that character, but they're the they're the living version, right? They're not the two-dimensional version anymore. You're, you're, we're added 2D. We're into 3D. And the pieces of the story, like, there are pieces of the story that we knew were going down, but we never got to see them. Like, the Kobe Helmepo arc with Garp. Like, we didn't know the details of that. I didn't know that Helmepo doesn't know how to tie a rope. Bless him. I assumed he doesn't know how to tie a rope. But to see, to see the relationship between Helmepo, Kobe, and Garp was really, really cool because we knew that was going down. And this actually leads me to another kind of theory I have about One Piece is that, sure, yeah, the story's going to end in like five years or whatever, right? The manga is going to end in five years. The anime is going to end in eight. I think that's what they said. But even if that is the case, there's a never-ending series of stories. There's all the stories that happen on the side. There's all the information of the arcs that we just see, like, one panel of, of, like, you know, where is Hachi right now? Well, Hachi wasn't in the show. I, I wonder how if they're going to replace him or do something with him. But um, there's all these pieces of the story that, like, we don't really have the full story on. We just kind of know they were going down because of, like, bits of information hinting at it. Or, like, the thing with Zoro and the, uh, and the Baroque works. I thought that was so cool to introduce like baroque works are obviously going to be the main theme of the next arc right we're going to see we're going to see Nico robin we're going to go alabasta all that stuff i think chopper probably early on and then you know get over there but to see baroque works just like suggested in because because uh, uh zoro refers to that in the manga and in the anime he says at some point oh yeah these guys tried to recruit me but like to see that scene happen and as like Zoro's intro scene, I thought that was so cool. It's so cool to see these pieces of the story that are kind of like, we know they're there, but we don't know exactly what happened. And there's so much story to tell. Like Oda has this story built so far outside of what it is. And this is really a different universe version of it, right? It's like the MB MCU versus Marvel 6, whatever the Earth is called. Luffy, I think we just got one Luffy from this box. That's all our secret rares, I think. But there still could be sps and there still could be a signature oda luffy that wasn't it wouldn't that have been cool if i just did that that would have been crazy i might i might have to retire after that actually that would have been wild but yeah i think once they get a secret rare, but i think we haven't found the sp yet so even if i get through this next box i need to crash some more packs i don't know what i did with those packs stuck in a box somewhere but yeah, you know what I mean? So it's, it is its own thing. I think it did a good job of being its own thing. And I think that's kind of what sets it aside. Um, each, each character was like, really, I think, respected the honor of the character that they were playing and like really got to get down to the nitty gritty of who each person was. I think it sounds like actually the, the people that the character that most people had an issue with was Nami. And I, I can understand that. I think Nami is pretty different in this one than she is in the manga. But the acting, like her, the way her character is developing, um, bless him, I feel like is really unique and cool. And it was really great, I think, how the beginning of the show really followed a lot of similar stuff in the anime and the manga, right? There was so much that was like consistent between. The original story in like the first episode but there were these pieces that were hinted at it like oh yeah Uta. whoa this card is nuts that's awesome i've pulled different sps and i think that's pretty much all the sps i care about actually kaido would be cool 
but that's fine. I got Uta, Yamato, Nami, and Enel, and that was like, that's exactly what I wanted. So that feels pretty cool. And there should still be an alt art in here too. I don't need to go digging through all that stuff because I would definitely like, you know, when a pack, when a box is dead, I'm going to keep stripping the packs. But it's harder to know now, which I like. I like that sort of challenge. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to see Chopper. I can't wait to see Robin, who they cast as Robin. I don't know what the timeline is for the other seasons, but at the rate that they move through, you know, they got through like, what, like 60 episodes or something like that in one season. And so if it's eight eight episodes per season and if they're putting out a season a year like i think we'll catch up pretty quick because each episode was covering so much of the story and it's really impressive because there's so much story to fill in right and we still i still felt like it was a very full telling of the story and it still makes reading the manga and watching the anime exciting even if you watch this first there's more people in the world that will watch the live action than will read the one piece manga or anime Mon Cherie. I got triple Mon Cherie in this case. That's kind of wild. Um, but it just makes more accessibility, right? Now more people can enjoy the story of One Piece. It may motivate more people to start watching the anime or reading the manga. And I think the more people that learn this story, like the more good people there will be on planet Earth. Because One Piece does something to you as a person. Like when you read this story, it changes you. It reminds you the importance of the adventure. And not focusing so much on the goal like knowing the goal is there right the goal is there and you'll get there or you'll get to a goal that will be relative to the goal that you wanted to get to and if you don't get there whatever but like if you're not enjoying the ride of getting there what's the point what does the goal even mean and i think having that understanding and core at the center of what you do and who you are um is 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 important as a human being and uh, it's cool because the the, the, anim the movie, the show, the live action was its own story. And for me as a fan that knows most of the story, to be excited to see like, oh, how's this fight gonna pan out? Or who's actually fighting who? Or how is this going down? Like what's happening, right? It doesn't make me feel like I know everything that's coming because that would make it a little bit more stale. So it's a, it's a fresh retelling of the story that I think gets the points of the stories across and that's more than I could have asked for as a fan. I'm a dentist, I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. Don't hold swords in your mouth. I know Zoro, even in the live action, can hold a sword between his teeth, but it's gonna damage something, somewhere. So I don't recommend having that kind of leverage hanging out of your mouth with that sort of pressure on your teeth. It's not a good idea. So um, just keep your swords in your hands or on your belt. Thank you, gozaimasu. Alright.